Oh my gosh. All right, Carvana. This has been the best performing stock I've bought, and it's also been the most accidental stock I've bought. As in, I didn't need to invest in this company, and they have accounted for like, I think a fifth of the gains in my portfolio. Uh, it's just like crazy. There's like two main things I'm gonna cover today. The first one's long-term perspective and like fundamental investing. And the second one is how to turn any situation into a winning situation. And I think this is like literally the best example to ever showcase it, ever. And so we can see this stock IPO'd April 2017. So, you know, it IPOs and it, uh, that's not a, not a 13, a 17. But basically, like after they go public, they just start bam, 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 crushing it. And like within a couple of like months, this is a weekly chart, they go from like 10 bucks to like 50, which is kind of insane. Um, and then, you know, over the next year, I mean, you know, they're a $110 stock. And so the question is, how do you go from 10 to 110? And really this comes back to what we were talking about with Shopify. This comes back to scalability, right? Carvana, what do they do? Well, they sell cars online. Okay, let's see. Selling cars, scalable, online, scalable. Are they ever, like, has this ever been done before? No, it hasn't really been done that well before. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Maybe we have an investment here. I'm gonna be honest with you, before we get into the actual trade, like, I'm a little bit biased with this investment. And the reason why is because, like, my first car, and like, my parents bought, like, they bought it through Carvana. And we were shopping through Carvana. And, and I remember, I, like, this guy, he came and he was in this big pickup truck, and, or not, it was like a flatbed truck. And he drove it. And they, I think they drive from wherever they come from. They drive into the Charlotte. They have like a bunch of cars in Charlotte. And then the guy drives the actual car to our house. And then we test drive it and we bring it back. And then he's like, what do you think about it? And then we're like, okay, cool, we'll buy it. And uh, I remember we went to like a bunch of dealerships before we went with Carvana to try to find cars. And it was always just like this nightmare process. And then we did this and it was like super, super, super easy process, right? And so before you get in this position, you know that it is a good, model because you like if you want to really get like the deepest understanding of a company possible like go through their process buy their product um, or, or whatever their product purchasing like whatever it is i remember the guy he was like well how do i get home now that you bought this car and he's like oh don't worry about it you know i'm just gonna take an uber and he like ubers away and i'm like holy crap that's like so smart like why can't more companies do stuff like that and so for me going into this position like I knew that this was like a pretty solid company just because I'd gone through their buying process and bought a car from them. And so I want to preface you with that as we get into this position because this was not uh, necessarily a uh, position I meant to be in at all, at all, it wasn't. I think this was in 2016. It was definitely during the summer when this happened. Oh God, I wish I had the confirmations. I think it was, it was, it, what was it, 1772, yeah, so it would have been, I think right here, this is, this is probably, 1772, so basically what happened, I think this was it right here, so I remember it was like right before school started, but there were also like some stocks that were getting traded, basically what happened is the stock went up a bunch on a pre-market, I mean it was just exploding, and I'll actually check what the exact date was, real quick. I've been looking for a pretty long time and I seriously haven't touched this stock for like four years uh, or three years. So like, honestly, I'm really sorry. I think it said like 917 in Yahoo Finance. Um, and so I'm gonna assume that that's the right date. Uh, but gosh, honestly guys, this was so long ago. Uh, I, I really cannot remember. I think like if I had to take a guess, I would say it was this day. Maybe it was this day. Basically what happened is really, really simple. The stock went up a bunch pre-market, all right? It was like any other pre-market gainer, and it showed up on the pre-market gainers list. And so it goes up pre-market, goes up pre-market, and then it has this big gap, right? And then whatever day it was, uh, it goes up a bunch. And so if we kind of zoom in a little bit and we'll call this blue color like the one minute chart, basically, you know, so I was sort of first getting into active, not even new trading. And so it went up a bunch and I was like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be awesome, it's gonna keep on going up. Plus, I already know that Carvana is a cool company because I just got their car, car from them, right? So I bought and then it went down kind of for the rest of the day 
I would say minus like, I don't know, 7% or so at the end of the day. And I had a decision to make, and at the time, like I wasn't as disciplined as I am right now, right? So I would like buy a stock, and, I, and if I lost money on it, like I wouldn't want to sell it, which is a big fallacy. Like, I know it worked out well here, but usually, like in 99% of the time, especially if you're not in a really great bull market, like you've got to stay disciplined or else you'll lose a lot of money really quick. And so for me, like this was not a good thing to do. But what I decided is I said, look, I just lost money day trading Carvana, but I know that Carvana's a good company. And I know that they very recently just IPO. So they're probably gonna like do cool stuff since they just went public. And I personally think that they're a great company. And I decided that instead of like selling this for a loss, I would just hold it as a long-term investment. Now this is something that I very, 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 very rarely recommend to do. And in my entire investing career, I have done it one time with one stock. And that one stock is Carvana. And the results of it have been about plus 500 or 600%. So like, here's the deal. This is a very rare thing to happen. And you don't want to rely on rare things to grow your portfolio. Most stocks don't go from $10 to $110 in two years. If they do, and you can find them, please let me know because I will pay you a lot of money to tell me what those stocks are. But you know, most of the time, like that's just not how it works, right? And so what happened with this position is I get in, I mess up the day trade, and I totally lose money in the short term. But instead of like freaking out and selling, what you do is really simple. You just think about the long-term potential for growth. Think about the long-term overarching trend. And you say, okay, look, relax, chill. I'm gonna step back for a minute. I'm gonna relax. I'm gonna look at this position objectively. You know what I'm gonna say? I'm gonna say, you know what? This looks pretty sweet. This is a good company. And without even looking at their financials, like I have never looked at the financials of this company. And I've been invested in them for years and years and years and years. Like I don't know how much money Carvana makes. I literally have no clue whatsoever. Because like I know that they probably lose money since they are a new company. New companies, like especially tech companies, they usually are gonna lose money for a long time until they make money. Amazon didn't make money for like a decade or something like that. Yeah, so they lose money, they don't have any earnings, but their revenue is growing exponentially. They went from 130 million to 2 billion in like three years, which is insane. And even though they're not making any money, like they're getting massive. Like Carvana, is, it, it's just a really big company, right? And I don't know if they're gonna last through this crash or not, but like I don't really care. Like I didn't care about their financials when I got into this position, and I still don't care about their financials because their financials are irrelevant. The only thing that matters is public perception. The only thing that matters is what people think about buying cars online. And if people think that that's a good thing, which they're gonna think until the market starts to crash, then Carvana's gonna freaking go up. And so I made a decision. I said, look, I know I messed up this trade, and honestly, I probably should have been more disciplined. I can't go back in time uh, to show you the one minute chart just because Yahoo Finance doesn't keep data for that long for one minute candles. But basically like I bought and I thought it was gonna go super high and it didn't go super high the first day and said it went down on the first day. And that's what gave me hold it. And even after the stock basically doubled in like a week, I decided to keep on holding it because, and this is a big concept. When I started out with this investment, I experienced a little bit of pain. And what's interesting is, and I kind of see this um, over and over and over with students. I'll have uh, two groups of students. The first group of students are friends and just colleagues, people that I meet, I know in the real world, and like, you know, they're cool people, and I'm like, hey, you're cool, and they're like, yeah, you're cool. And then they like learn about what I do, and they learn about the investing. And this is a very, very small minority of my students. But they like learn about me after they meet me, and so they realize that like, they're like, oh my gosh, that's so cool, can you teach me about investing? And like, I give away copies of my book for free, um, I just charge shipping, right? And so online, like, people, they get it for free. So I'm like, sure, here's a free copy. And I just hand it to them. And what's interesting is those students, which is, again, a very small minority. So I have a small sample size here. Maybe, you know, a couple dozen people, a hundred people. They get the book and like three quarters of them don't even read it. And like one tenth of them actually do anything with it. And maybe 5% of them make like more than five figures with it ever. And again, like, please remember, I can't like guarantee results or anything, but I mean, this stuff will work. Anyway, versus the people who, who buy the book, Free Plus Shipping, they have just that little itty bitty bit of pain of paying like a nominal shipping charge. I literally like, I think I spend like $5 to send people a book. Like I lose money shipping you the book. They, they experience a little bit of pain paying for the shipping charge, 
They're covering the shipping charge, my bad. So they cover the shipping charge, and they have a little bit of pain. And the completion rate of the people who actually experience just that little bit of pain, from what I can tell from all the testimonials and all the people I've contacted, is like, and, I, and again, this is approximate, I can't know this for everybody, but from what I can tell, it's upwards of about 80 to 85, almost 90% of people who like get, just get it for free, but like actually cover shipping, they have just a little bit of pain. And what this pain does is this pain leads to commitment. And it doesn't have to be a huge commitment, but it's enough of a commitment to make someone actually want to read the book. It's enough of a commitment to make them stick with their decision. And so I think that little subtle psychological difference, uh, and, and then obviously they go on and they create the actual results, they make the actual trades, they generate a ton of income and, and wealth and net worth, and they actually go out there and succeed with their investments. Why? Because they stick with it. Because they go through the education and they lay out that foundation and then they start trading, they start investing. And I mean, like there is a statistical correlation between the amount of time you spend investing in financial markets and your wealth. I mean, it, it, it's like, you just have to know what you're doing so you don't lose all your money. And I mean, no results are guaranteed ever. But I mean, if you know what you're doing, it's like, you know, it's like, it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty simple. I think that's what happened with Carvana. Because I experienced the pain, of a 7% loss and again, one of my earlier positions, this is probably like one of my earlier stock trades. I think I started like five years ago, a half decade. I don't know, it was like definitely one of my first trades in 16, 17. This was like before like swing trading though. This was before this portfolio. So like, I think this is probably the earliest position in this portfolio just because it was actually from like, like a couple of months before I made like this portfolio. So I think it was like, this is like the earliest position just because of the way I, got into it. So anyway, I had this little bit of pain of, of a downturn, about 7%, and I lost that money, and it made me, feel, made me feel a little bit of pain, and that made me feel committed to Carvana. And it made me say, look, I'm gonna stick with this freaking stock. I believe in this company. This is the coolest tech company ever. Nobody else does what they do. They are doing something really freaking cool and innovative. And that pain, that pain gave me the conviction to stick with them. That pain gave me the perseverance to stay with them after they went to like 20 bucks, to 30 bucks, to 50 bucks. To stick with them through this shit down to, this was a hard thing to hold through. This looked like a head and shoulder set up. Everything about this was awful. Like I literally had to just close my computer, close my eyes, and pretend it wasn't happening because I believe in Carvana. It's paid off, it's paid off pretty well. Uh, it's, it's been pretty sweet. I might sell, I might sell a fifth just because the market's kind of high. But I mean, these guys, these guys have been crazy. And the reason all this success happened was literally an accident. Like I got into a day trade right around this time period and I lost money on the day trade and I made the craziest decision to just hold the, I think it was this day, I think it was this day right here with this really, really, really big candle. I think I bought it like the bottom of this candle. No, 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 I bought it like the top of that candle. And then, oh God, I don't remember, it was a real, I think it was, no, oh, oh, that was, that was it, that was totally it. Right here, I remember it now so much clearer. I remember because they just IPO'd and I was like, oh my gosh, this company just IPO'd. And so basically they went up a massive amount this day. And then this day they had a high, oh, they had a high day of $15. No, it wasn't that day. I guess it was after that day, but it was like, it was like basically like this, right? Like I bought it at the top and then it closed really, really, really low. So yeah, good example of two camera candles there. Just a phenomenal, phenomenal trade in general. I mean, holy crap. But yeah, that was for Ivana. One of the weirdest positions. I've ever made one of the most freak accident things I've ever done, and it led to the best results ever. So big, big, big takeaway here is that like a lot of your results are gonna come from investments that you don't necessarily expect them to come from. Uh, and a lot of times, like when you invest solely for the sake of diversification, like one of the big reasons I got into this position was like, oh, I should diversify my portfolio and have some stuff in the automobile industry, uh, which was silly. Like this is obviously a tech investment. Like it's highly correlated to tech stocks, but that's, beyond the scope of this course. And I was like, I better have this for a diversification pick. And like one of the main reasons I owned it was for diversification. And that little diversification pick ended up creating like a fifth of my portfolio returns, which is really, 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 really good. I mean, that's phenomenal. The thing freaking quintuples. And uh, I mean, it all came from just thinking, oh sure, I'll buy that stock, why not? And sometimes the most underestimated, the most underrated, the ones that you look over the easiest, those are actually the stocks 
they're going to lead you to a majority of your return. So think about like what could be that scale investment for you? What could be that big game changer? What could be that shift that you could have that you come from your investments that you might not necessarily expect immediately, but you stand and you say, look, this looks like a good thing. I think this could happen, and I believe. Because the moment you have that, all of a sudden, all you have to do is stand steady while you let the you know financial market go up and down and up and down and up and down. And so hopefully you know you sell one time. But in the long term, it's like I mean this is the like a definition of a curving compounding growth curve. Um, so obviously that's not going to last forever. Uh, but hey, you know what? If it lasts for another couple of months, then heck, you're going to be a whole lot richer because of it. So. Yeah, really, really crazy investment in Carvana. It has paid off really, really, really well. I, I should probably sell some of that now. <laughs> to be honest, it's, it's a weekend though, so I can't. But one that I wasn't really expecting to play out, one that I didn't get into on purpose. Uh, it just kind of worked. So next time you have sort of a freak accident, and this is big. When I was starting out, I think this is the concept that we'll end on because it, it's really, 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 really important. When you're starting out, there's going to be a big tendency, at least there was for me, and there was for most people that I teach, there's going to be a really big tendency to sort of instantly get out of losing positions and freak out if you lose any money. And you want to have a stop loss for sure. Like for me, my stop loss on this trade I think was like $14 or $14.50. And I don't think it ever hit my stop loss, at least in the time frame that I had it set for, for like a short term time frame. And like I had a stop loss and I did not move that stop loss up ever. Because if you move the stop loss to 16 bucks, and you get stopped out at 16 bucks, the stock goes to 110 bucks, how are you gonna feel? Like I've been in that position at least 25 times and it feels like shit. And it's happened to me like in much faster time periods, like within a day or two, I would have had like five figures, but it's gone because I had a stop loss at like 15 and I increased it to 17 and the stock went to 17 from like 20. And like, you don't wanna lose, you know, 25% of a position in a day. But similarly, if a stock's gonna triple, like you want to give yourself a little bit of play and when you set your initial stop loss do not increase it until the stock goes at least like five or ten percent above your entry point and starts to make profit and you're setting it to like break even or something and you give it like a couple of minutes or something because if you let your investments play out a vast majority of the time they'll either hit your stop loss which sucks but it happens you know it's okay you, you want to have like a minimum downside and maximum upside using technical analysis and the patterns you know. So you want to like either hit your stop loss or it, it explodes, right? And as long as your upside is more than like twice your downside, like you can basically trade as much as you want and you will have as many winning investments as you can physically put your finger on the button to invest in. Um, and that's really powerful. And that'll put you in a state of abundance uh, almost immediately, which is pretty sweet. So. With that said, thank you so much. Hope you get a ton of value out of this training. Go out there, apply it, absolutely crush it, and I will see you in the next module. Thanks. Bye.